Hello. Okay. You know how all of a sudden in the middle of the video I was talking like, crap, I think I flip flopped. Chin Chi Huang Di, I did it backwards. I did, but I fixed it in your notes. I know your notes didn't quite follow. Wait, what I did in the last video, because you're like, wait, because um, you have what I fixed. But I wasn't going to record the whole video again. So just know that what I did in the last video, the dogs are making noises underneath me. Don't quite match this because I have fixed it now. Um, I just flip flopped the Han Dynasty and Chen Chi Huang Di's dynasty. But they're they're right now. Okay. BC BC. Okie dokie. So what we dealt with last time, or in class, or whatever video, I don't know, however you did it was Chen Shi Huang Di and the Chen Dynasty. Well, ladies, let's talk about you for a little bit. Um, oh my gosh, man, can I do anything else wrong, you think? I think so. I'm gonna make everything virtual is like craziest thing ever. Okay, we're good. Okay, so. Ladies, girls, you already know. Most of the time in history, you're good for taking care of the men, taking care of the kids, taking care of the home. You don't matter most of the time. Um, there are some specifics. We'll deal with it. Sparta, Rome, you do have some rights later on. Um, but, uh, not now. Girls, and I'm sorry. Like, I'm not trying to be rude to you. Hi, I'm a girl. Okay. Um, it's just the way it was throughout most of history. It's just the way it is. That being said, China, if you're looking at, like, women's rights which didn't wasn't a thing back then but if you're looking at that yeah china's not the place to be um especially not ancient china in any way shape or form okay because uh you got none girls were not valued at all so much so that if you had too many females and you should have talked about this last year too um in geography if you had too many females you could be killed at birth just put under the water and drown. Oh my gosh. It's just the way it was. Peasant girls were often married off to richer men because their families couldn't afford to feed them. For real. So you would often have richer noblemen who had many wives, many wives, okay? Um, the wife who is considered the most important wife is going to be the first wife to give the guy a son. So like, if I'm the first wife that Bob marries, yeah? But I have given birth to two daughters. You are the fifth wife. Man, the guy has several wives. But you produce the first son, you bypass all the other wives, and you become first wife. Even if you're the youngest, even if you're the last wife, you're now first wife. You're more important than we are. Even me, who's like 20 years older than you. Why? Because I did not produce a male heir for him to pass his stuff down to. It's about producing male children. Um, ladies, when you marry a man, not only do you give him the gift of you, but you give him the gift of a dowry. Uh, did I put that in here? I did. It's right here. It's one of your vocab words, I'm pretty sure. Dowry. Um, you will see this in Europe, too. Okay, once we get there, they do this in Europe, too. Um, the dowry is a gift that the man gets for marrying you. Typically, the father 
decides what the dowry is going to be. Um, and honestly, ladies, you don't really have a say. You're going to marry whoever dad chooses. This idea that we have of like fairy tale type marriages that Disney feeds us. No. No. Um, throughout history, marriage is much more an economic or social status transaction that girls, you don't have a say over. Typically, whoever you're going to marry and your father will meet up and they'll talk and they'll say, hmm, I would like my daughter to marry you or I would like to marry your daughter. And they make a deal. Well, that takes all the romance out of it. How much are you worth? Are you worth five dollars? Are you worth five chickens? Are you worth, I don't know, a necklace? Oh, I'm not wearing one. Are you worth some gold? What is the gift that the guy's going to get for marrying you? It could be land. It could be gold. It could be anything. It could be chickens or pigs or whatever. It could be. But you got to give something to the man for marrying you because he's willing to take you in. He ought to be just willing, like happy to just take you. Um, that being said, it really does take a lot of the, it's raining outside. I thought I was hearing something weird. I've never seen this much rain. I'm in Dallas. Not now. Whenever you're watching this, I'm not, but I've been in Dallas and I've never seen this much rain. It's crazy. Okay. It's raining. <laughs> Where am I? That was my squirrel moment for, you know, the day. Um, I don't know what I was saying, but oh, 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 yeah, I do. Um, it definitely takes out a lot of the romance that we think of with falling in love for the rest of my life. Not back then. Uh -uh. It's an economic or social status transaction that is often done without you even involved. That's nice. Okay, you should have talked about foot binding last year. We look at it a little bit as well. Noble girls had their feet bound to look like this. Um, this is a lotus flower. You know what? I don't have one. Here we go. I don't have one pulled up when it's open for you to see. Lotus flower when it's open. Okay. You can see it in the process there. I think they're real pretty little flowers. The lotus flower is an important flower, um, especially in Buddhism. But this is it right here when it's closed. Okay. Who got the idea to do this? I don't know. I think it was because his wife kept running away and he decided to cripple her. But that's just me. Um, the men are going to start crippling noble women. Um, they didn't do this to peasant girls because peasant girls work, like in the farm, the fields, whatever. If your foot looks like this, you can't work. You'll see why in a minute. It cripples you. But noble women, what do they do? They sit and they talk and they drink tea and they do their little, whatever it's called, little sewing things. What do they do? Nothing. So it's okay to have feet that you can't walk on easily. It's not okay. Guys, today this is illegal in China. Just saying. But we're wanting to make the foot look like this. Yeah, that ain't normal. Your heels down here, your feet are up here. What? what, what? Okay, look. This is a normal foot. This is a foot bound <laughs> foot. It's supposed to resemble the lotus flower when it's all closed up. 
not really a foot person. So that's really kind of look to me. Yeah. Do you understand what's happening? Pretend like my hand is my foot. Okay. This is the heel and these are my toes. This is the ball of the foot. Yeah. What they do is they break the, the foot and the toes are pulled under the ball of the foot. And then the big toe stays out. So like it's broken. And then all of this is pulled underneath here. Ah. Yo, this is done when the little girl's a baby or a toddler. Okay. Some when they're very young. Um, yes, it hurts. <laughs> Kids always ask me, do you think it hurt them even as a baby? Yeah. You still feel pain as a baby. Yeah. They bind it up, like wrap it up. And then later they'll open it up and pull the toes even tighter and bind it up again. And they do this for a while until the broken foot grows that way. It's like I told you before when we were talking about India, if I break my arm and nobody sets it, the bone's going to grow back this way and I'm going to be crippled. You have to put it back in place. If we pull the bone purposefully this way, it's going to grow this way. And this is the way their feet are going to be. That's an x-ray. Um, today, foot binding is considered a form of torture. But back then, it was considered really beautiful. Can you imagine Bob goes to Joe and Bob says, hey, Joe, I got a daughter over here. You want to marry her? And Joe says, let me see those feet. Because this turns into a sign of beauty. The tighter the pull, the smaller the feet. And the smaller the foot, the more beautiful the woman. You know how you guys make that big thing about homecoming and prom dances, like asking them, you make such a big thing about it. Don't do that in my classroom. I don't think it's cool. I don't think it's funny. Don't waste my time. Just saying, see, I'm such a witch of a teacher. Um, but you know, you make those big things, the big shows out of it, right? Can you imagine, girls, the guy comes to you. He says, I'll take you to homecoming. Just let me see your foot first. I wish, I tell my classes every year, please do that. Record it, I wanna see, I wanna see the reaction. Do it publicly, do it in the middle of the hall. Let's see what people say. Because to us today, we look at that and go, ugh, that's gross, that's not pretty. That's torture, that's not cool, that's sad. Yeah, but not back then. Notice that this is a modern picture. You see the size of her foot compared to the size of her hand. There's her toes, her little toe. And look right here. The heel isn't bigger. I mean, I know you look at it and go, why is the heel so big? It's calloused. Um, the women aren't typically walking up here. If you watch movies of like old Chinese stuff, you see the women take very tiny shuffled type steps. You see this in Milan where the women shuffle. In class, I'll actually do this for you. Okay. If we're in class, I'll actually do this and shuffle for you and show you how they walk. If you're watching this because you missed this day, ask. 
just come into class and ask. Say, Miss, will you show me how they walked? And I'll show you, okay? But they're typically walking on their heels. They don't walk here because it hurts. Their toe is underneath there. I mean, imagine walking on top of your toe, which is mostly like bones and stuff. It hurts. So they typically walk on their heel, which causes calluses to grow. Ugh. Those are her toes, you guys. And of course, that huge callus heel. Look at the little shoes. They're so cute. They're like doll shoes, but they shouldn't be on a human foot. It's just sad. It, I mean, again, today it's considered a form of torture. Here you see the shoes again. Up on their tippy toes. Their one little tippy toe. Because all their other toes are pulled underneath them. Guys, um, when Mao Zedong took over after World War II, where's the notes? Here we go. When Mao Zedong took over after World War II, he, what's the word? It's not, I don't know what the word is. He made this illegal, okay? He outlawed, that's what I was looking for. He outlawed this, he made it illegal. Um, whenever China goes communist, well, the whole point is work. Communism is about workers. Well, we can't have people working with feet like this. So he outlawed it. He made it illegal. Now, again, you know people are still going to be doing it for a while. That's why we have some old ladies today, like modern pictures of old ladies. Because that was 1945 when World War I ended. Mao Zedong goes communist in 1949, I think. I think it's 1949. Okay, so let me look this up. Um, when did China outlaw? Oh, okay. No binding. Dang, sometimes I'm pretty proud of myself. Sometimes I'm totally off. Like, I was wrong with Chin Chi Sorry. And sometimes I'm pretty surprised. I got the date right. Ooh, this is a good picture right here. Shows what happens. I've never seen that one before. See, look, this little old lady, she's sitting there and that's what her foot looks like today. I wonder if that's the same lady that we saw in the other pictures. Looks like she's cutting this grandmother's toenails. That's not a tight break at all. That's a, that's a strange break, actually. This is a tight pull. Whew. Her toes are like underneath, all the way on the other side of her foot. Oh, this lady. Oh, I don't know what that's about. I was going to say, but I thought that was one of the shoes, but it's not. Um, so anyway, it was made illegal, okay? Whenever Zedong takes over and takes China communist. Because again, you can't work like that. And that's kind of the purpose. Um, but again, you are still going to have people doing it um, for a few years after until it really gets, I mean, it's like getting rid of, the Indian racism with the caste system. It takes time. You gotta get those old generations out. I know that sounds rude, but it's true. You gotta get the old generations out, bring the younger generations in who look at this and go, oh, that's torture. That has to happen. So, okay. I feel like these videos are so short, but I know I won't get past that done in class. So, bye.